There are some amazing people around that we can learn from today. People who have already braved the storms and come out on top. People who are still alive today. People who started with nothing and ended up with something great. Famous people, not so famous people. Maybe even people you know, but don't know their stories. People who had an early vision and ambition people who turned their focused dreams into the reality of success. Life is dull only to dull people. This is true, but it also could have read, life is interesting only to interesting people, or life is successful only to successful people. And what I'm trying to say is that you must first become mentally, from an attitude standpoint, that which you wish to achieve. A famous restaurateur was being interviewed by a reporter who asked, when did you become successful? He replied, I was successful when I was sleeping on park benches because I knew what I wanted to do and that I would do it. In short, his attitude had been one of success, of expecting success long before the material, the tangible rewards of success had been earned. But for now, remember that a person must act, look, and because of these things, feel successful before the success he seeks can come. We must learn from personal experience. Pretty simple, learn from what happens to you. Take a look back over the last few months. Did you make some mistakes? How could you correct those for the future? Take a look back over the last year. Have you done it right or done it wrong? Let's correct it for the next year. Don't drown in a sea of your own negativity when you can float on the ocean of life. You are meant to be a wonderful, loving expression of life. Life is waiting for you to open up to it, to feel worthy of the good it holds for you. The wisdom and intelligence of the universe is yours to use. Life is here to support you. Trust the power within you to be there for you. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you're empowered and feel it, you're beginning to step towards your success. The moment you start feeling whole, your healing begins. And when you love yourself and you love all of life, you'll create an equal. Now you're causing an effect. And I think that's the, the difference between living as a victim in your world saying, I am this way because of this person or that thing or this experience. They made me think and feel this way. When you switch that around, you become a creator of your world and you start saying, my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life. And now that's a whole different game. And we start believing more that we're creators of reality. This is your moment to shine. And if you're not willing to shine, then step aside. If you're not willing to work, then this is not the place for you. You got to toughen up. You got to look up. You got to build up. If you want it, this is the time to go get it, but you got to work for it. You got to believe in it. You got to trust in it. If you put yourself in a new situation, then new genes code for new proteins and build new neural structures and new nervous system structures. Same thing happens to some degree when you work out, right? Because your, your muscles are responding to the load, but your nervous system does that too. So you imagine that there's a lot of potential you locked in your genetic code and then if you put yourself in a new situation, then, then the stress, that's the situational stress that's produced by that particular situation unlocks those genes and then builds new parts of you. So that's very cool because who knows how much there is locked inside of you. Okay, so now here's the idea. So let's assume that that scales as you take on heavier and heavier loads. That more and more of you, you get more and more informed because you're doing more and more difficult things but more and more of you gets unlocked. And so then what that would imply is that if you got to the point where you could look at the darkest things, so that would be the abyss, right? That would be the deepest abyss. If you could look at the harshest things, like the most brutal parts of the suffering of the world and the malevolence of people and society, if you could look, that, look at that straight and, and directly, that that would turn you on maximally. And so that's the idea of rescuing your father, because imagine that you're like the potential composite of, of all, your, all the ancestral wisdom that's locked inside of you biologically. But that's not going to come out at all unless you stress yourself, 
unless you unless you challenge yourself and the bigger the challenge you take on the more that's going to turn on and so that as you take on a broader and broader range of challenges and you push yourself harder then more and more of what you could be turns on and that's equivalent to transforming yourself into the ancestral father into all because you're you're like the what would you call it you're the consequence of all these living beings that have come before you and that's all part of your biological potentiality and then if you can push yourself then all of that clicks on and that turns you into who you could be that's and that's the re-representation of that positive ancestral father so that's why you rescue your father from the belly of the beast acknowledgement is crucial to beginning you have to dig deep and face yourself in stark reality what do you think about yourself acknowledge your qualities and your flaws not what your family and friends think about you and what do you think how do you feel about yourself objectively look inside yourself you might think that is an overrated mainstream idea but i promise you it is an imperative step you must take and a big problem consciousness will take shape only if you start thinking about it first you have to understand your virtues and flaws then you have to begin to speak about them not advice seeking but stating as facts by speaking about them i mean you must stand up and say hey this is me i am this person and it will hurt let's say you were blindfolded for 10 or 15 years if after many years you choose to remove the blinders when you open your eyes even the slightest bit it will hurt as hell so first you have to acknowledge that opening your eyes will be painful most of those who get this far will quit and fail because they fear pain and they fear failure. A lot of what ifs will appear in front of them and a lot of possibilities that might lead to failure. So they decide to do nothing and they stick their heads back in the sand. Will you also do that? I know you won't. You are better than those who choose to be blind. You will keep going. What comes next in the process of recognizing a life that lacks confidence? After the pain, or shall I say during, you will start to recall one by one all the chances you missed, all the possibilities you didn't take, and all the time you wasted. It is important to take these lessons and promise yourself it won't happen again. But don't spend too much time regretting a wasted past. Stay in the present, leave the past behind, and act now in a way to improve your future. Prepare yourself for some further disappointments. You who are starting to see straight will realize the friends around you are not so perfect as you thought they were. You will see their blindness and how they mismanage their lives. Don't start mocking them. Don't tell them how stupid they are because they haven't asked for your opinion. You must know they are not yet ready to open their eyes. This process has to start from within. You don't achieve worthwhile goals quickly or easily they take time they take struggle they take relentless pursuit day in and day out that's what it takes but also things don't usually fall apart quickly either at least at first it, it's it's a slow process don't slip here a little setback over there, a little wearing down of discipline and will over time. That's the thing. Success and failure are generally slow processes, either slowly building things up or gradually tearing them down. And that's why I say you've got to pay attention. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. Because those seconds, they turn into minutes. And minutes turn into hours. And hours turn into days. And days turn into years. And so, that second, that second that just went by, that counted. And so did that second. And so did that one. And in those precious seconds, you were either building or you were decaying. You were either gaining ground or you were losing.
Jerusalem. In that second, and in every second, every second counts. So make every second.